Today we will discuss a common problem in neural networks named overfitting. We will also discuss its solution. We will discuss two types of solutions, L1 regularization and L2 regularization. Let's start with what is overfitting. In overfitting, a model learns the detail and even noise in the training data to an extent that it negatively impacts the performance of the model on new data. That practically means that the model is great at predicting and sometimes too great based on the training data. So it fits the entire training data in such a way that it understands the training very well but it cannot generalize. It's not able to understand the new data that well. Sometimes if your model is too complex, for example, if you provide too many layers and too many connections between them, it commonly occurs in those types of models. So if you have too many parameters, that means too many weights relative to the number of observations, which allows them to model the training data extremely accurately, but it makes them too complex to generalize to new data. Okay, now here we have a picture from Wikipedia. The green line depicts an overfitted model. It is closely tracing the training data. This dependence on the training data may result in a higher error rate on new unseen data as represented by the black outlined dots here. In contrast, the black line illustrates a regularized model where overfitting was handled. It is not entirely following the training data, but it is likely to perform better on unseen data due to its generalization capability. From one of the previous videos when I was uh, constructing the neural network using scikit-learn's MLP regressor, we discussed that MLP regressor was using mean squared error as its loss function. So whatever target variables we have, the prediction and the target variable were subtracted then squared for each sample output summed up and then averaged that is what a mean squared error is that loss function was not regularized meaning is that the weights of the neural network or the parameters of the neural network could go in any direction trying to fit every data point in the training data set if we were to find out the characteristic of the data that overfitting should be fine but if we want to use the model for predictions in unseen data then we need some sort of generalization so what we want to do here is whatever weights we have in the neural network we don't want them to become too large because in the neural network remember that each of these weights is multiplied by an input so if you have high weight then it practically means that the model is giving high priority to that set of inputs only for which the weights are high so it is preferable that overall the weights are a little bit in the smaller side rather than weights being varying from very small to very large. So what we do is with the regular uh, loss function, we add another part which is based on the weight. In L1 regularization, there is this absolute value of each of the weights that are associated with each neuron. Those absolute values are summed up. That acts as the regularization. That summation is multiplied by a value alpha. This alpha controls how much importance you want to give to the regularization part. Generally, this alpha remains quite small. If you ask what should be an ideal value of alpha, maybe 0.01 is a good starting point, maybe 0.001. Uh, it could depend on different applications, but those numbers are good starting points. So this alpha times whatever regularization you have, in this case L1 regularization, that is summed up with the regular loss function here let's say we are using mean squared error as the loss function and that becomes our new loss or the cost so this whatever loss we have that is coming from the output 
plus L1 regularization. That's practically it. And note here that if we have large values of W, those large values are directly added to the cost function. And hence, the optimizer will try to reduce these weights during the back propagations. Now, what do we do in L2 regularization? In L2 regularization, instead of directly adding these weights, we actually square those weights. Previously, when we directly added the weights, we made sure that we take the absolute values of those weights. So if some weights are negative, they are also considered positive errors in the cost function. But now we are saying that we are squaring that. Now notice that if you have a weight 3, that 3 becomes 9 as the error. So what will happen here is the optimizer will try to reduce this weight because whatever we put here, if that value is greater than 1, then that is squared and even becomes larger. But note here that if the weights are smaller than 1, let's say if the weight is 0 0.1, then 0.1 square becomes 0.01. So the square of a number that is smaller than 1 is even smaller. So the optimizer will try to reduce the weight and in most cases the weights will be lesser than 1. It may be close to 0 but not 0 in L2 regularization. But here what happens in L1 regularization is the optimizer will try to reduce the weights. In practice some of these weights become zeros. So that means some of the inputs are completely ignored when you use L1 regularization. So L1 regularization can be used if you want to find out which features are most important or most influential. So sometimes for feature selection, L1 regularization is used. For L2 regularization, even though these values will be quite small, but note here that once it becomes lesser than 1, the optimizer finds that if it is 0.9, um, the error is becoming even smaller. If it is 0.5, then 0.5 times 0.5 becomes 0.25, so way smaller. The resultant error is way lesser than the weight itself when the weight is less than 1. So what happens is in L2 regularization, these weights generally do not become exactly 0, but they become lesser than 1. When practically the neural network weights are a little bit more homogeneous rather than very large values greater than 1, the neural network has less tendency to overfit the data. And that's how regularization helps. Let's go back to the code we wrote earlier in another video with Neural Network where we used this pecan.txt file to predict uh, pecan production. We had uh, this scikit-learns MLP regressor class where we constructed our neural network, but we did not mention any regularization. MLP regressor has this parameter alpha, which is basically that alpha multiplier we have for our regularization. So it's not L alpha, it's alpha. Then let's say alpha is 0 0.01. Now MLP regressor will activate L2 normalization using alpha value of 0 0.01. MLP regressor does not have L1 regularization, it only has L2 regularization. This was our entire code. Um, these were the predictions. Um, this is the only new part that I have added in the code. So let me run everything to see if anything changes. So now we are going for the prediction and we find that the prediction changed a bit here for this new data. Now, how will you know that you need regularization? 
if you use PyTorch or TensorFlow like packages uh, where actually you have better control over the epochs you will be able to see how in each epoch the training loss is reducing so the training loss will keep reducing but if you have another validation set then you might see that after certain epochs the validation loss has started to increase that is the point you know that right after that epoch the model overfitted and that's why the validation loss is increasing even though the training loss is decreasing your model has become too perfect for your training data you will need to handle overfitting I hope the overall concept that we discussed today regarding overfitting and L1 and L2 regularization is clear. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.